ね。Nah, nah, nah, get back up. <laughs> We did that one already. <laughs> Praise the Lord, Pastor. I just want to uh, thank you um, in front of your wonderful congregation to have this opportunity to start the new year here at this church, and、uh, it's a landmark occasion. The Lord gave me a fresh word for 2014, and、um, and this is the first place in 2014 that I'm delivering this word. There is there is a bunch of new faces out here, so they have no idea what to expect. That's good. Hopefully nobody told you what to expect.、Um, just to do a little housekeeping in the beginning, I just want to go over a couple things. For those who didn't get the book, we definitely have some copies left in the back.、Um, I may extend an opportunity for those who have not been here over the past two days to actually come in for a consultation. So、uh, somehow maybe I'll. Let that out、uh, during today's message,、um, but that information will be in the back.、Um, and、uh, this book, if you didn't get it, you need to get it because the beginning of the book, the first four chapters, is just about positioning yourself for success. Success in health, success in life, success in whatever you're looking to have success in.、Um, that book, those first four chapters, will get you in the position. Now, the last thing before I start. Was I set my alarm clock? This mic going in and out, or is it? Okay, good. Thank you for letting me know. There's not much. Adjusted, 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 adjusted. adjusted. Okay. Well, being a chiropractor, I love the old adjustments, so it's a good thing. But I set my alarm clock this morning for 6:47, and no particular reason. It's just that it was set for 5:47, but I needed to get up that early, so I just moved it to six, and it said 6:47. But the Lord had a different plan, Pastor. He woke me up at 6:45, not 6:47. And I have to say that you and your lovely wife were on my mind at 6:45. And the Lord said to me, "There's something you need to do for those、um, two servants of the Lord today." Okay, and I'm going to share that later. And it, it we're all taking part of this. Um, opportunity, okay, for the people here to be blessed, okay, because、um, the Lord, when the Lord wakes me up two minutes before I'm supposed to get up, okay, and,、um, and 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 something special on my mind, I'm taking heed to it.、Amen. Now, if I'm going to take heed to it, when I ask you, when I tell you about something about I'm taking heed to, I'm telling you, you need to partake in what the Lord has woke me up in the morning to do. Okay, because it's going to be something special. Now today's message is sort of going to follow through or follow up on the last two, well, the message on Friday night and the teaching on Saturday. And today we're going to talk about gaining that faith that causes you to heal.、Amen. Now you can take the word heal literally, meaning to heal the physical body, and then you can take it. More broad spectrum, and talk about healing anything in your body that, or anything in your life that is out of order or sick.、Mm-hmm. And it can be a number of things, okay? But the principles are the same. And the Lord gave me a piece of scripture this morning to work through, and I'm going to read it through, and then we're going to go back, and it's going to be kind of preaching, kind of Bible study, kind of you better listen to this word. All right. <laughs> So, because the Lord got my attention with it, I it, when you get to know me, I'm not much on long, long preparation. Okay, I believe that the Lord is going to spark in my spirit at the due time for the due word for the people at hand. Okay, because it's fresh not only to you but it's fresh to me. Okay, I like to work like that. I like to be inspired by what the Lord. Is saying to me, and you know, I got my little video camera there, but because sometimes after a message, I feel the anointing in such a powerful state. I'm not even sure what I spoke about, and I always like to get the the, the the CD or the video because if you guys got blessed from it, 
and I'm not even sure what happened. I'd like to watch it the next day. Amen? I'm being honest with you. This is not prideful or, or... Listen, I'm a doctor. I don't need to be out preaching. But the Lord said, hey, doctor, I need you out preaching. So I like to enjoy it too. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. So we're going to turn our Bibles to the book of James. Okay? We're going to go um, in, in, in the fifth chapter and verse number 14. Okay? And um, as you get yourself to that piece of scripture, and we know which one that is, okay? It's, a, it's, it's about the sick person doing something to get healed. This mic is still doing some wacky stuff, correct? Push it up, push it up. Push it up closer? I'll put it, I'll hook it to my cheek, maybe. <laughs> All right, how's that? That's good. Yeah. Whatever. Amen. Okay, now it's good. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're all at that scripture. All right? Now, I'm going to read through this, make a couple of comments, and then we're going to jump back in it, and we're going to dissect it. Because let me tell you something about the Word of God. Not only is it inspirational, but it's also educational. Yes, and sometimes we all need to be a little bit of a scientist to take the Word apart. Because what happens is, and God's not a, just a stickler for laws and regulations and rules, okay? But sometimes if he has a plan of action, like a recipe. You know, you guys got a recipe for something, you know, something that you cook. And, and, and say, mama gives it to you, gives it to the daughter, and the daughter says, well, this doesn't taste like uh, the way my mother made it. Why? Because when the mother asked her and, and scrutinizes the recipe, she forgot something. She, forgot, she put two sprinkles or something, and she forgot to put the ginger in it, or whatever the deal is, it did not come out the same. The results were different. So what happens is, Amen. we need to look at what God's telling us as a recipe to be successful yes. for the thing we're looking for our faith to accomplish. Yes, sir. All right? Yes. So what happens is, if we're not following the recipe, and the results aren't coming through, right. it may not be purely because of our faith issue. It may be a fact that we're not studying deep enough into what he's trying to tell us. Amen. All right? Cool. So let's, let me read through this. It says, if anyone among you who are sick, is anyone among you sick? Okay? That's the question that's coming out in James. Now, I'm just going to stop for one second. When, when James is saying this, when he says, is anyone among you sick? Who is he speaking to? Is he speaking to who? Strangers? Is he speaking to the congregation? Is he speaking to the church? Is he speaking to the lost? Who is he speaking to? See, I'm under the impression he's speaking to the saints. Okay, He's speaking to people who have an idea of what he's going to be talking about. All right? So we just need to set the stage to see who's speaking to who. Then he goes on. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them, meaning the elders, pray over him, meaning the person who's sick, anointing him, the person who was sick, with oil in the name of the Lord. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. Then it goes on to say, and the prayer of faith, which we brush past, okay, because... We're not dissecting to find out what that prayer of faith is. But it's going to be revealed. And the prayer of faith will save, wow, the sick. And the Lord will raise him up, the sick person. Okay? Now it goes into this whole sin aspect. And if he has committed any sins, wait a minute, wait a minute. My stomach hurts. My heart's bad. I got a bad knee. I got my asthma acting up. My ear is hurting. I'm coming up for prayer. Why are we going into, at this scripture, why are we going into this? If they committed any sins, he will be forgiven. You see, it's all part of the same sentence. But James, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is not going to stop there. He goes on to say, confess your trespasses okay, to one another and pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. So, so let's, let, let's, let's understand what's going on in this word. It's not just about just going up and getting prayed for and, and, and believing that somehow you're going to get healed in that situation. Because there's a lot more going on here. And there's an issue which is compounded at least four times discussing sin. It's not just getting on the prayer line and say, I got an issue in the name of Jesus, be healed. There's some factors that are being spoken over and over. Whenever Jesus has to repeat himself one time, okay, it's important. 
when he has to go four times, we better start paying heed to it. Uh -huh. Because I think somehow the Holy Spirit knew way back when, when this word was being transcribed, that people were going to bypass probably the most critical aspect of getting you in the position to exercise or get your faith to the level that it's going to do something positive in your life. Amen? Amen? Then it goes on to say the effective, okay, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. See, there's a lot more to that word than a prayer line. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. You see, if you're sick, it is your responsibility mm. to seek out the elder or the elders, okay, of the church. Mm. It is the responsibility of the sick person to know that when they are not in a right state, when their body is out of order, no matter if it's a stomach ache, a headache, their nose is running, it doesn't matter if you have a bow and arrow through your head, okay? It says that if any among you sick, let him, okay, call for the elders of the church. It is our responsibility to seek out men and women of God, okay, that have the ability to understand what you're going through so that there's some type of transaction that's going to occur when you come up for prayer. Amen. Amen? Now. I'm going to dissect it again. Let him call for the elder or the elders of the church. Who are, and this is going to be a tough one. I'm going to really separate some theology here. The elder of the church. Why didn't they say the pastor of the church or the apostle of the region? Why didn't they say the bishop? Why didn't they say, why did they use the word elder? Okay, in our hierarchy right now, okay, elder, okay, the elder is not over the pastor. The pastor is over the elder, okay, and the apostle is probably over the pastor. So why are they picking out an elder, okay? Let's understand this word elder. Amen. I'm 53. If somebody is older than me, they are my elder, okay? Now, if somebody's younger than me, okay, I am their elder. And the word elder is talking about the experience of the person, okay, in the things of the church that were going to be or going to be germane and pertinent to what is going on in that person's life. So, for example, if the church, if the if the church has an establishment and the hierarchy, the apostle, the pastor, the, the preacher, the uh, the the, uh, the the prophet, the uh, evangelist, we have the, the titles and the names. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now it's all good and, and merry to have that. Uh -huh. But what happens is if somebody is an elder appointed, got the badge elder, okay? But they have not been through oh, come on now. the experience yeah. of having to trust God and be victorious come because on. they believe the word of God and it came through in their life. Okay, it does not mean that in the situation that you're looking for to have an agreement with that if you have somebody who's been through it, I'd rather be with them yeah. than somebody with a badge. Amen. Oh. Oh. Here's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is this. Yes. Yeah. If you're sick mm. and you know some church mother. Mm. Or maybe somebody, but somebody has to be seasoned. Mm. They gotta been through that. They gotta have scars on their knees Come on. from praying. Oh, okay. Oh. They may not be able to make it here every Sunday because they're working or, or the situation is. But you know that they went through a sickness or they went through an ailment. They were diagnosed with the cancer and they turned around and the Lord said to them, "Don't eat this." And don't do that. And trust me with this. Uh -huh. And trust me with that. Yes. And the doctor says, don't listen to that. And don't listen to this. You need this. You need that. And the person, no, I'm going to trust God. Yes. Even if it means I'm going to die. The Amen. same way. Yes. The three Jewish boys told the king of Babylon. 